Hi, my name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems and today I'm going to demonstrate how to use a visual execution analyzer in Enterprise Architect to build and debug a c -sharp application. I shall assume the role of a software developer working for a bank that has developed an application to manage batch financial transactions. This model-driven example will illustrate how Enterprise Architect tools can be used to create great software. The webinar introduces the topic of software engineering using a model-driven approach. Enterprise Architect is used to build use cases, class diagrams, structured scenarios, activity diagrams, and much more. The code editor illustrates how easy it is to write and debug C Sharp code using Enterprise Architect as your IDE. You can use the record and analyze window to automatically generate sequence diagrams. We can track issues and change requests to a use case or a particular method within our code. And finally, with the click of a button, we can document our design, which includes all of our project artifacts, such as a use case and sequence diagram. The bank has used Enterprise Architect to model a series of use cases that describe how the application should work. The execution analyzer shown on the left of screen contains the build scripts necessary to compile and debug our application. The bank is using the Visual Studio 2010 compiler. You can change your compiler by changing the corresponding build script. The default directory and application path may vary from one project to another. Test points can be used to apply programming by contract principles to software design. The profiler can be attached to a running application, taking samples and collecting stack information for all current threads. This information can help explain why an application may be responding slowly. The Locals and Watches section can be used to examine how variables change over time. Software developers at the bank need to ensure that each financial transaction is managed in an accurate and timely fashion. The Record and Analyze window enables you to control a recording session. The bank wants the development team to record and document a sequence diagram of our executing application. The Breakpoints and Events window is used to halt the execution of a program, allowing you to evaluate variables and investigate system behavior. Breakpoints are essential to debug our C-sharp application. The Project Management window can be used to allocate resources to ensure that all tasks are completed on time and on budget for the bank. The debug window helps us step over each line of code so we can observe system behavior and understand what the application is doing. The call stack is used to display all currently running threads in a process. The call stack can be used to identify which thread is operational immediately before an application crashes. The system output window is used to display the results of each compilation, highlighting any syntax errors. And finally, the project browser contains all of our packages and model elements that describe our application. Let's examine our class diagram in a little more detail. We have a class diagram representing the various objects that we wish to model and build in our application, including the customer, account, and user interface, which will use a simple text-based menu system. We have a series of use cases representing system functionality. Enterprise Architect can be used to model structured scenarios for each use case. We can drill into our withdraw use case and view the corresponding structured scenario. The scenario clearly indicates which step is performed by the user or system. In addition to the basic path, we have a number of alternative paths that can be determined by which amount a user selects to withdraw. I do not have an alternate path for when a user selects $200. I'll show you how easy it is to create a structured scenario. In the description, I have some text that may have come from an office document. We can highlight this text and automatically generate a structured specification. We can then take our structured scenario and automatically generate a number of diagrams. For example, here is a simple activity diagram that makes it easy to see what happens when a user selects a different path. Here a user selects 50, 100 or 200. 
Once information is in an enterprise architect model, you can use the principle of model-driven development to save time and ease the burden of software development with the added benefit of complete traceability. Let's run the application to see how it works. The application uses a simple text-based menu to manage user input. I shall use the application to display the balance, withdraw $50, and check the updated balance at the end of the transaction. Finally, I quit the application. To briefly summarise, we've used Enterprise Architect to model a use case, a class diagram. We've created a structured scenario, and then from that structured scenario, we've automatically generated an activity diagram. To edit code, we simply select a class, such as an account, and press Ctrl plus E. The bank wants the development team to create use cases and documentation for some of the code that has been written by contractors. Enterprise Architect is particularly helpful if you need to document a legacy application. So let's look at the code editor and see how it's done. Each line of code is numbered and you can instantly jump to a method. The code editor provides a context menu which enables you to create a use case element for a method that you select from your code. So let's create a use case for set balance. The use case now automatically appears in the project browser. Now if I drag this newly created use case onto my diagram, Enterprise Architect will automatically establish a relationship between the use case and the corresponding method, helping to maintain complete traceability. It is also possible to take an existing use case and establish a relationship to a method. These links can then be viewed in the traceability window later to determine why a particular method has been written. Let's drag the get balance use case onto our diagram. If I create a link, I can now point this link using the link to element feature to a specific operation. I'm going to select get balance from the list. So now what we've done is we've created a link between our use cases and our class diagram. Here at Spark Systems, most of our code changes come from strategic decisions or are derived from issues and their corresponding change requests. So let's have a look at how the bank handles some of these change requests. You'll note in the project browser that there is a support package. Under the support package, we have a number of different support issues and change requests. We are unable to capture nightly transactions for processing. We have no way of knowing what has been processed. As a result of this support issue, a change request has been developed. The change request indicates that the development team needs to create a transaction log to store details of each transaction. I shall now assign resources to ensure that this gets done. In order to complete this change request in a timely manner, we need to assign resources using the project management window. Let's assign a developer and give them five days to complete the task with a deadline in one month's time. It's always a good idea to enter a detailed description. This description will allow other staff to take over and assist if required. Here at Spark Systems, we use the project manager every day to allocate resources to change requests, customer issues, and it also allows us to manage our individual timelines. You can assign multiple resources to any given task. If a deadline is approaching and you do not believe that a task will be completed on time, you can assign additional resources. 
I find it useful to view diagrams not only in the diagram form shown above, but occasionally I like to switch to a Gantt view so I can see these timelines and deadlines as they approach. Let's do that now. I can now see each of my change IDs, and I can quickly and easily see which staff are allocated to complete each task. I can double click on the items and see when they're due and how much of each task has been completed. Now that we have assigned resources to our change request, we are able to drag the change element onto our diagram. I shall create a new class entitled Transaction and establish a link between the class and the change request so we can maintain traceability at all times. The Transaction class will be used to implement the feature identified in the change request. The purpose of this change request is to build a transaction log to capture the amount, type and date of each transaction. To quickly and easily add an attribute, simply use the keyboard shortcut of Control shift f 9 You shall add a number of attributes to represent the transaction ID, the date, amount and transaction type. Please ensure that each attribute has the appropriate type. For example, amount is a double, while all three other attributes are strings. Now that we've created our transaction class, we can use the context menu in order to generate code. Please note that the target language is C-sharp. Set the desired path and press generate. We can now view our generated code. I shall modify the private attributes to become public. In a real world project I would typically use get and set methods for each. I shall now write code to create a hash table to store each transaction. The green text on screen represents a comment. The change request is clearly identified by the ID of 10067. This makes it easy for other developers to understand what the code is being written for and to trace this code back to a specific change request, support issue or requirement. In addition to improved traceability, you can use the context menu to search for the change ID in files, the model or to locate the corresponding change request in the project browser. I shall now make changes to the account class to create the hash table and update the hash table every time a withdrawal takes place. I shall now add a breakpoint so we can intentionally stop the execution of our program and evaluate the code to ensure that the hash table is functioning correctly. The locals window will allow us to examine the current state of all variables such as the amount being withdrawn and Buzz Architect also supports conditional breakpoints and recording markers. I shall also use a start recording marker in the main application. I want to capture a sequence diagram of the application running. This will help to satisfy the documentation requirements that the bank has outlined. The bank would like to see what happens when a user overdraws their account using this application. The start recording marker instructs the debugger to trace all executed calls. Recording is stopped again when either the thread that is being captured terminates or the thread encounters a recording endpoint. Now I can build my application using the execution analyzer. The system output indicates that there are no errors so I can now run my application. Rather than pressing play in the debug window, I'm going to use the play button on the record and analyze window. Selecting the basic recording mode, I can now capture the information I need to generate a sequence diagram. Looking at my initial balance, it is 100. 
I'm now going to withdraw $50 from the account. You'll note that Enterprise Architect has stopped at the breakpoint. Using the local windows, I can examine the transaction log. I can even take a snapshot of the variable so I can see how this variable changes over time. Using the debug window, I can restart the application to withdraw another $100, which will overdraw the account. Enterprise Architect allows you to take a snapshot of a variable when a program is at a breakpoint, and then use this snapshot to see how the variable changes at different points in its lifetime. It is clear by looking at the two values for the variable snapshot that the hash table has in fact been updated. I can continue to run the application, removing the breakpoint as I go. Finally, I can check the balance and I can see that the account has in fact been overdrawn. Once I quit the application, you'll note that the debug session has ended. I can now automatically generate a sequence diagram that details what happens when an account is overdrawn. Simply use the context menu and say generate sequence diagram. The sequence diagram highlights each major operation and indicates the amounts withdrawn from the account. I can now include this sequence diagram in my documentation. To document our design, simply select the root node or relevant package and press F8. Select a suitable template and generate a report with the click of a button. Our system design now includes use cases, class diagrams, structured scenarios, activity diagrams and a complete report that details how design decisions were made and how they've been implemented in our application. This report could be handed to a new team member to better understand the development process. Alternatively, it may be a valuable artefact for clients, management, or other key stakeholders. Please visit www.sparksystems.com to find out more about the Visual Execution Analyzer. Download a free 30-day trial to use the VEA and write and debug applications for yourself.